every waterfall we're building is gonna have a different sound. Some of them are gonna have this more high treble type sound. We want to create a little bit of that because again, I'm a good hundred feet away from the waterfall right now. I promised them that they would be able to crack open these doors and hear that from inside their house. When they're up close to it, we wanna tone that down and we wanna focus more on some of those bass type sounds. So I can't wait to get down there and show you guys the details of how we're gonna soundscape and those different types of sounds, those trebles and their bases and everything else. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Good morning, everybody. We're back out here. Yesterday was kind of funny how right about an hour and a half, maybe two hours before we wanted to finish, we got all that hail, which was an awesome time to quit, right? It just said, okay, enough for day one. But today we're back out here. We've got a lot to do. Today's really gonna set the pace though for what we need to get done on our last day. So you can see we covered everything because we didn't know if it was gonna rain that much more or hail that much more. We gotta pull all this back where Ed's sitting. We gotta start building our waterfalls as we come up and build our waterfalls I think what's so important is not to have a set vision obviously we want to come in kind of this next drop should come in more on an angle from here from there we might get another one then maybe a pool then maybe come up a little bit more but we'll let the rocks and the earth kind of dictate which way we twist and turn this thing today though I think if we can get someplace up into that upper pool then tomorrow we can really focus on grading things out cleaning things up finishing lighting but at some point today we're gonna have to get our pumps in here and plumbing run busy 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 day lots of people still the same amount of access which will be the biggest challenge because you could put a hundred people back here but if we can only move one rock at a time it is what it is here we go my boy Tim over here we got Jack up in the machine and we're flying through we've said one two three rocks in under 10 minutes so we're doing really well but this is so important so I think what a lot of contractors out there miss or pond builders whatever are the wing walls and how important those wing walls are not just to tie into your waterfall but to help stabilize the soil and everything else if we didn't put in some of these wing walls we'd get a lot of erosion every time it rained which then means our waterfall will probably leak it also just looks super cool the other thing this wing wall is going to do there's this pathway that comes to this patio right here it's going to give a much more intimate feeling because it's going to feel sunken in this area so we're going to come in here we're going to let a little bit of dirt fan down in between this rock we'll probably set another one here leave a little bit of room between these boulders and all those ugly pipes so they can hide all that irrigation stuff with some plants and then we'll start moving up the hill and just doing some outcroppings here and there i love working with people that know what they're doing it's so much easier Yesterday, we killed it. Now I say we, like me and you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because half yeah. the team wasn't here, right? And I was so excited to work with everybody. Well, I'm well, just thinking about how much further we could have been along if, if guys didn't leave to go visit Jay's prehistoric pets. Jay was such a nice guy, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's really not room in So here you get for invited all out, to, right, to build this amazing waterfall for a celebrity, and first thing you want to do is leave and not help. I will say, on the project. I will say, I didn't tell you this yesterday, but it was kind of my recommendation. Like, hey, you guys should go because this is going to be the one opportunity you have. So 
Why did I have to stay more? <laughs> <laughs> Seemed like a you good idea at the it. time. Oh. You had it. And yesterday we got some of the more technical stuff done. The reservoir got in. We got yeah. all those aqua blocks. That's a super time consuming part. So we finished that. We finished some of the wing walls. We got the frame rocks to one of the waterfalls. And today is really just waterfall building. Yeah, and I see us making a lot of progress. We've got a lot of hands out here today, which is kind of counterproductive sometimes. But the fact that there's so many little things to do, like graveling in those stream areas, hooking up plumbing, getting the pumps in, there's plenty to keep everybody busy, at least for most of the day. Yeah. John's working on a little play area for the kids over in there. You're waiting on I'm some. I'm trying uh, to figure out another field trip. Yeah. That's what I'm working on. <laughs> well, our fearless leader, I think, went to go work out somewhere. Like. <laughs> I, I, you know what, John? There's a parade down in LA for the for the Rams. We should maybe go hit that up. Some football and beer. Yeah. Football. <laughs> Sounds well, appropriate. I think about lunch allegedly. Time. You know what? I dare you. I dare <laughs> you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll send you pictures. We yeah. will never be invited back. <laughs> All right. We're more of a mascot well, let's see than what a we can get done today. We. I, I'm thinking like lunchtime. <laughs> lunchtime, we take out the grinder and take about four gallons off the top of John's hat. <laughs> There's room. There's room here. You can turn it inside out. Come on. Let's Just do it. Leaving room for hair. <laughs> take the grinder. Case, case it returns. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for following me up here. Yeah, no, I'm back up here again. And the reason I'm standing up here is, like we talked about before, this is the view that matters. There's no way they're not gonna take advantage of this gorgeous patio deck up here. Like everybody, this is the family outdoor living space. It's close to their kitchen, it's close to their family room, close to a living room over in here. And so this is the sight line that really matters. And so when we're down there, Ed and I were actually thinking of bringing the waterfall from this direction, but from the view up here, it makes a lot more sense to bring it from the other direction for a couple reasons. We'll see it better from here. It also creates a lot more real estate for them to get up and behind the waterfalls. And we're trying to create this pathway and I call it more of like a goat pathway than anything as a way for them to kind of get up and around the waterfalls and get out through a gate over on the other side. And we're going to take you guys down there in a little bit, but make sure when you guys are building waterfalls, whether it's close to the house or this far away from the house, you get inside the house, you get into the their chairs inside the house and you make sure those things line up to make sure you take full advantage of the sight lines from every room including sight lines from outside so as important as the sight lines are what's even more important to this family the Cleary family is the soundscaping we're gonna be doing they're really into the sound of the waterfalls and so are we and when creating something like this the reason we have two five to nine pumps on there is so they can almost soundscape it themselves or fine-tune that sound to whatever their likings are with those five to nine pumps not only are they remote control off and on but you can change the speed from 5,000 gallons per hour to 9,000 gallons per hour and with two of them they can say we want a outdoor waterfall concert or we want it to be peaceful and a little bit more tranquil when we're sitting up close to it every waterfall we're building is gonna have a different sound some of them are gonna have this more high treble type sound we want to create a little bit of that because again I'm a good hundred feet away from the waterfall right now I probably promised them that they would be able to crack open these doors and hear that from inside their house. When they're up close to it, we want to tone that down and we want to focus more on some of those bass type sounds. So I can't wait to get down there and show you guys the details of how we're going to soundscape and those different types of sounds, those trebles and their basses and everything else. And you guys, on every project, we do something like this. We show you tips and tricks.
likes. So if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you pound that like button, right? And we'll keep doing this for you over and over and over again. Hey guys, tell your neighbors, tell your friends, tell your children, like, comment, subscribe. So you guys make sure you don't just follow along to the end of this episode where we're showing you the tips and the tricks of soundscaping, but you tune into the next episode where more importantly, you get to see the Cleary family authentic reaction to what I'm calling an outdoor waterfall concert. Working with the guys down here at the bottom of the waterfall and Ed has given us a super awesome task of making the final four feet of the waterfall. It's super important. We're creating a pooling area in here. The depth of the water, not only is it maximizing the length of the stream right up to the end, but the depth of the water in here is super important to the sound that you're gonna get out of this last waterfall. Looks like there's gonna be a, a really nice sheet coming off of that last stone. And by falling into this four to six inch deep pool at the end, it's gonna give you a nice low bassy sound, which is gonna be a sweet finish for the falls. So what he's doing in here is he's cutting this rock pad, he's creating a bib liner. And even though we're over top of the whole reservoir. For me, I just hate a big gravel pit at the bottom. But by stretching this stream out, we're creating a fine balance between too small of an infiltration area and too big of an infiltration area. There's a lot of trees coming in up here. You're gonna have all kinds of leaves and debris, so we can't make this tiny at the end, but we're still gonna have a good five by five area for the water to infiltrate. We're gonna create a last waterfall right here. No pressure on these guys. This is the first little thing that you come to. This is where the kids are gonna play. It's just a really nice spot for everybody to interact and it just extends the awesomeness of the feature. Instead of having this big gravel pit, that's what they're working on down here. I'm gonna pretend like I'm doing something, but really I'm just gonna watch these guys doing all the hard work. The excavation itself is going really well. The soil is good. We're not hitting any rocks in the ground, but the access is treacherous at best. This is an extremely steep slope. We're coming in one entry point, one exit point. So things get a little bit log jammed here. It gets a little bit dangerous when we're setting up and actually picking the rocks and swinging them over. But everybody kind of has a good handle on how to act around the machine. Stay far away from the load. So if something does come loose, it's not gonna hurt anybody. But I'm super impressed with the progress so far. And I don't see us not getting this done by Thursday, so let's make it happen. all these pumps and one of the most important things with any water feature is choosing the right pump. For example, if I were to choose a pump that didn't have enough gallons per hour on this, it would look more like a little trickle and we want to create a lot of thick water and a lot of sound. And so the pumps that we're choosing for this specific project are the SLD, the solid handling pumps. This is a five to nine, which means it does 5,000 to 9,000 gallons per hour. The nice thing about that is it's adjustable. So when choosing the right size pump for this, it's hard to really dial in the exact gallons per hour that you're looking for. For us, I know the rule of thumb is a minimum of 1,500 to 2,000 gallons of water per foot width of waterfall. On some of these waterfalls that are three to four feet wide, we want to make sure that water spreads out over that. The other thing we're looking for is the right sound. And I know for the Clearies, sound is everything. So that's why we're using this remote control solid handling pump. It'll actually allow them to dial in the sound exactly the way they were.
looking for these different like shards, you know, almost these pieces, these broken off pieces, and they're perfect for creating different little spillways. And so I'm sitting at what's gonna be the main waterfall coming here, but we wanna take advantage of this V that's right in here and try to get water as it comes back from behind here, split off, come around, and then fall this way. So the couple of challenging things that Tim has to do here is one, you can see how much lower this space is back in here. He's gotta create a weir that's the same height as this so that water when it splits most of it comes off of here but some of it splits off comes this way falls into this pool then drops and comes this way doing this just makes the waterfall that much more interesting rather than it all just coming here if you look at waterfalls in nature you always see these little like tributary things kind of coming around and i think it's the fun part that we enjoy so much about building waterfalls absolutely seeing the opportunities for these types of things to happen now i will say this it doubles the amount of work it takes to build a waterfall when doing this oh there's not too many people that would complain of just having this I don't think almost nobody would yeah but we know better so basically the, the time-consuming part is I'm dry fitting all this stuff together to visualize how that water is gonna react before I go ahead and foam in that lot that, that bib liner to make sure the water is going where we want so it's tedious it's time-consuming for sure I would say if you're getting into it your first time master this big rock big rock all the water coming here once you've really gotten comfortable with doing this then start playing around with this because if you screw this up and too much water comes this way then this waterfall will look silly yeah you just completely kill yeah. the main waterfall down so it's really knowing through experience how much water can i allow to bleed off right. this way and come over in here and really setting this stone at the right height so i don't get too much coming if i set it too low everything will come this way if i set it too high we won't get enough to cover the width of this hopefully that helps waterfall I insist on using Aquascape's black waterfall foam nothing but the best for team Aquascape doing here is we got this uh, this is the start of our bib liner we got to foam all this gravel in make sure water don't get through it and then we're gonna take this piece of felt drape it right over and that's gonna give us our waterproof seal to make all this water come over the rock where we want it to go and not behind us
So Tim, Jonathan, and myself are working on some of the detail work. And this detail work, the edge work, and the detail work to me is just as important of every waterfall. If we fail on this part, your eyes are drawn to it and your eyes should really be focused on the waterfall. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna do some cobbles, a mixture of gravel, it's really help hide this liner in here in there and we're gonna start buttoning up these edges and moving right behind Ed as he continues to move up that hill building epic waterfall Beach times are coming to a close. These guys are bringing in the pea gravel. We're wrapping all this stuff up. It's gonna look super sweet. In my mind, the challenging spots for the pea gravel are anywhere where there's a slope that's steep like this, because what happens, and we all see it, is that we come back, and this is showing again, and all the pea gravels bled down into there, and we know that that's where the water's gotta infiltrate, so we gotta make sure that this doesn't all migrate in there and lock it in and stop the water from being able to get back into the reservoir, because that's bad. Yeah, the water needs to be able to get back down in there at some point so bringing it up nice so that it all comes together we got some of these stones like this brian's throwing me we're gonna lock all these in probably stick a few rocks in here and there so it's just not this weird entire beach with nothing in it that'll just bring it all together we're gonna have just a curve kind of comes from the bridge it's gonna bring it right around through here it's gonna tie it in and then it's gonna continue down in there in the waterfall that's probably where the kids are gonna play all the time right under that waterfall right there that's where i would have been when i was a kid sitting right in there trying to dig the frogs out from underneath the rocks that's what it's all about so yeah I'm getting back to that so the beach is almost done you guys check it out when it's finished and that's what I got end of day two not bad right like, no not it's bad always, at all it's always hard to imagine or remember where we were in the beginning of day two right we actually got a lot done like none of that stuff was done we right. counted this rock that rock and this rock <laughs> and that was it that was it i mean that's oh. awesome yeah right so ed we've got all kinds of different style waterfalls here mm -hmm. and the, i think what we're both looking to do is create different sounds you know we always talk about some of those bass sounds versus some of those treble sounds yep. and only through experience we kind of know what's going to happen and with two five to nine pumps we're kind of playing around with some yeah, different things in here yeah, exactly hoping that we get <laughs> the right sounds yeah, exactly right? so for example this waterfall here what do you think kind of sound we're going to get out of this you know so off off of this one because it's going to be spread out this is not really going to be loud because it's going into a deep deep pool of water so it will have a more of a little bit of a bass tone to it but it's going to be really spread out it's just this really sharp edge I'm, it'll be very curious to hit, to see how this interacts the other thing it is really really vertical so hopefully we have enough velocity where it leaves the face of the rock because i think that's key if it's not enough water so let's go to the extreme so say we just have one pump running and if it's just five thousand, like would it just hug the face of that so then it would be like silent you right. know it's like you're not mixing in any air or anything like that it literally because of the surface tension of the rock and water yeah. that, that interface you know just literally sticks to that rock and i think it would literally be silent so we needed to leave it yeah so and i think that's where that u-shape comes into play so if we can get a majority of that coming through it's going to leave maybe in some areas and then other areas it's going to start hitting but because of these other rocks kind of jutting in that's what's going to create that sound that's going to create that white water type yeah. of an action so i think with a one we'll get that kind of treble sound with mm -hmm. two we might get a lot thicker a deeper, bass sound. deeper bass sound and as yep. the second one comes in then this is going to take on a lot more action over here yep. where that water then leaves this rock hits this mm -hmm. and kind of all comes together now we come up to this one and this one with one pump 100% yep. is just going to have that treble sound yeah because that water is going to split around this big rock here and come like this yep. but with two this is going to get really thick mm -hmm. this is going to get thick and it's going to come off of this so <laughs> i think you're going to get this water kind of all it's coming gonna together violent. It's, <laughs> violent, it's gonna be, right these two streams are going to be fighting against each other this is yeah. a dangerous water part, right? <laughs> it's totally dangerous. and then this one up in here i think because of the sound of this and the sound of this you almost won't hear yeah. that one yeah and that 
that pool's deep. This is six yeah. plus inches of water. So it, this and is it's gonna, so wide. Yeah, it's wide. There's not a whole lot for it to hit on the way down. Right. It's going to go into deep water. Yep. So this is actually where the water just slows down yep. a little bit, kind of lets your mind rest for a second yeah. and before the before aggressive, the, violent, before dangerous the violent area here. <laughs> and then we still have some more that's to play, play with. Area though. So that's <laughs> it's supposed to be the kind of the cool, calm stuff where the kids could walk in and out, kind of climb around all that stuff. It's like perfect. Well, I can't wait to see what actually happens in these areas. I know you guys can't wait to see. Make sure you check this out tomorrow.